G'day guys, this is James here with a match preview of the first preliminary final between Sydney Swans and the Kangaroos, North Melbourne Kangaroos. So, it's going to be an absolute ripper of a game, ANZ Stadium, at um, 7.50pm tomorrow night, or Friday night. So, we'll go into the ins and outs, and the Swans, big news here, saying Nick Malcheski is playing, so they'll go in unchanged from the team that beat Fremantle two weeks ago, while North Melbourne have lost Jamie McMillan with a hamstring injury and brought in Ben Jacobs. So, they're the ins and outs. Now, this time I'm not going to go into who I think is going to start sub, because Swans may start with Nick Malcheski as sub because he's come back from an injury, but it's very hard to pick, and they never pick it from the bench, so in finals it's really hard to tip. We'll go into some some uh, form, recent form. So they played once this year, which is in round four, where North Melbourne smashed Sydney 91 to 48. Now at that stage, Sydney were one and three. So since then, the Swans only lost two games after that game for the rest of the season. So they turned their season around basically. Um, Swans last. Uh, five games against them. They've won four and lost one. Last time North Melbourne beat Sydney in a final was... Was it 96? The last time they played in the final, so... Which is the grand final. So, and the last time they actually played in a final was an elimination final in 2008, where Sydney won by 35 points, so... So I'm going to start with the matchup between the Swans back line and the North Melbourne forward line. Now the Swans back, full back line, um, all Australian Nick Smith, Ted Richards and Reese Shaw off the full back line, and then all Australian Nick Malcheski, Heath Grundy and Dane Rampey off the half back line, versus the half forward line of Levi Greenwood, Ben Brown and Brent Harvey, and the full forward line of Lindsay Thomas, Drew Petrie and Aaron Black. Now looking at those, Nick Smith will probably go to Aaron Black, he can play um, no, sorry, Nick Smith will go with uh, Lindsay Thomas because uh, Nick Smith's the best small defender of the year, according to all years. He's an All-Australian for it. Teddy Richards will go to Drew Petrie, and I think you'll find Dane Rampey will go to Aaron Black because Dane Rampey does really well against the Tall's, especially the not-so-athletic Tall's. He can run off there. Um, you'll see Heath Grundy go to Ben Brown, and um, I don't think you'll see Boomer Harvey... Having one of those as a matchup, he might get a, a Gary Rowan or something like that, someone that can run with him. With Nick Malcheski rebounding and Reshaw doing a rebound along Levi Greenwood. So I think the Swans back line looks really solid, but again, the half forward line on the forward line for North are playing really good footy. So I reckon that's going to be a pretty even battle in that back line. Go to the midfield now. And across the midfield for Sydney, Dan Hunter, Josh Kennedy, and Lewis Jetta, with Mike Pike, Luke Parker, and Kieran Jack. On to Daniel Wells, Andrew Swallow, Sean Atley, Todd Goldstein, Ben Cunnington, and Jack Zebel. Now look at the ruck battle first, and it is Goldstein versus Pike, Reed, and Tippett. Now Goldstein's a, a better ruckman than the three of them. Mike Pike is Swan's main ruckman, but he's not as good as Todd Goldstein. And probably not as athletic as Todd Goldstein, but I think that Tippett and Reed can both run with Goldstein. So they'll play Pike as a primary ruck, but I wouldn't surprise me if he plays more forward to give that extra legs and then put Reed in the ruck to run around with him for the, the whole field because what Todd Goldstein is really good at is sneaking forward, taking marks, and keeping goals. I think Sam Reed can stop that because he's actually a relatively good back, back, backman. So um, there's that. Now, we'll move into the midfield, and that Swans midfield is really good, but so is the um, the North midfielders, and you've got Ben Cunnington that's been playing really good footy. Um, you've got Dal Santo off the half-back line. He's been named off half-back for some reason. He's playing very, very good football. Um, Andrew Swallow, wouldn't surprise me if Jack Zebel moved forward because, again, he's a very good lead-up and hit-up player. Um, out of the Sydney Swans midfield, Dan Hanabry, Josh Kennedy... Parker and Kieran Jack is very good, but they've got a lot of players that can run through there. Um, I don't like seeing Jeddah off that wing. He's not, hasn't been at his best this year, but last week he played a really or last week, two weeks ago, he played a really good game off that wing. So we'll wait and see there. Um, 
I reckon Swans may have that better midfield, but again, the ruck battle, I think Todd Goldstein can win it. So he'll try and give North the best u- the first use to the game, but the Swans midfield is really good at negating the tap. So one of the best clearance sides in the league. So I think it's going to be a relatively even battle just because of that ruck. Now we're going to the Swans forward line versus the North's back, versus the Roos back line. Now this is where it starts looking a bit ominous for North Melbourne. With McVeigh, Franklin and Harry Cunningham... Goods, Tippett, and McLinn versus Wright, Thompson, Ferrito, Del Santo, Grimer, and Gibson. Now, they didn't bring in Joel Tippett, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. I would have thought that um, that they may have brought him in just to play on the extra tall because you look at it, Goods, Tippett, Franklin, and then you've also got Sam Reid on the bench who play tall. Um, that tall forwards are just going to... Well, Thompson will go to one, Grimer will go to, the, uh, go to another... Fredo doesn't tend to play on tools. He d- tends to drift a little bit. Um, you got Wright and Gibson who play small generally. Gibson can play a little taller. But I don't think they can stop that, that big forward line because if they put all their focus on Franklin, they'll go to Tippett or Goods. And if they if they separate it between Franklin and Tippett, then they've got Pike resting down there, Reed and Goods still sitting down there, as well as Craig Bird, Ben McLean, and the midfielders that can rest forward, and Mike Pike playing in forward because... Todd Goldstein isn't the greatest defender, we know that. He can play well forward if he pushes forward, but if Mike Pike goes forward, they've got no matchup for him. So I think that's one's forward line is, is better than North Melbourne's um, back line. So that's where I think the game's going to be won, is that forward line. If the Swans can kick straight, it's going to be... I, I'd hate to say it, but it's going to be a bad day for North. Um, now, I'm just looking here, especially at um, the North's team. North have named it, and they've named Joel Tippett, Daniel Curry, and Aaron Mullet as emergencies. Now, I wouldn't see Curry... I couldn't see coming, Curry coming in if there's a late inclusion because he's another Ruckman. Unless Todd Goldstein goes out or Ben Brown, then I can't see him coming in. If anyone's going to come in, I would say Joel Tippett to come in if there is a late withdrawal just so he's that extra tall in the back line. For Sydney, <coughs> they've named Jeremy Laidler, Tom Mitchell and Dean Towers as their emergencies. Now, Tom Mitchell is coming off a best-on-ground game in the Neeful Grand Final, which they lost after the siren. But I think that if the Swans are going to have a late withdrawal, it will be Nick Malcheski coming out just to save his hamstring if they make it through to next week. And if Nick Malcheski comes out, you know, I'm surprised he, that it wasn't named like this in the first place. I can see Jeremy Laidler going into that spot. Laidler's not as good as Nick Malcheski, but he does play that same position. So that's what, what I think would happen if there is a late withdrawal. Now, apparently in Sydney, they're looking at, at um, some rain. Now, we know the ANZ Stadium's surface isn't amazing, and they've been criticised playing them in ANZ, but the reason they play the games at ANZ is because it holds 85,000 people. So, I can see the record being broken this week. The record for an AFL game up there is 73,000, which was Sydney versus Collingwood. I can see about 75 at ANZ. Um, it's going to be a big game, Friday night game. But, and I'm just going to look at their, their stats for the season. Um... Swans first seventeen and five with North Melbourne finishing six to fourteen and eight. Now North Melbourne did challenge the top teams and they beat Sydney, but they lost to the bottom teams. They choked. Um, you know they're they're very up and down. They're up at the moment, but yeah. In, if you look at the the key stats, free kicks are equal uh, for the team, and North Melbourne won the hitouts. But every other key statistic the Swans have won during the season. Average disposals, average clearances, average inside 50s, average contested possessions, and average tackles. Swans have it up on North Melbourne. So I'm going to go into the TAB odds to have a look and see what they say at this point in time. And at the moment, it is very, very one-sided. Um, $1.20 for Sydney to win versus $4.60 for North Melbourne to win. I can't see North Melbourne getting over the line. Um... Swans midfield will negate the match. As much as North have a better Ruckman, um, the Swans midfield is so deep. They've got McVeigh that can run through there, Jeddah, Kennedy, Hanabry, Parker, Bird, Jack, Lloyd. Um, Gary Rowan can run through there. Even half the back line could run through there. So, and McGlynn. So, I think that, that midfield is just too deep for it, and their forward line is too big. Swans have such an all-rounded team. I can see them winning. Now... Looking, what I'm thinking, if it is raining, um, I'll see Sydney winning by just over three goals, so 21 points. Um, if it's a dry game, I reckon it'll be 
four goals, so 25 points. So it'll be 21 or 25, somewhere around there. So that is my preview for the Sydney Swans versus North Melbourne Kangaroos game. Um, keep an eye out for the other preview for the Hawthorne Port game, which will come up later tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, put a bet on if you want to. Don't listen to me. Comments if you uh, put a comment in, I'll answer you. And check out my other videos for the wrap ups. I'll put a couple more up, so I'll do some more over the next couple of days. And um, yeah, just keep watching. This is James saying, Have a good one. I'll catch you next time.